Deconstructing a well-told story is our favorite way to learn about storytelling. And since we like Star Wars, we're going to be looking at another brilliantly crafted story in the universe. Today we are going to be looking at Visions Season 2, Episode 9, Ao's Song. We will be spoiling this episode, so consider yourselves warned. The storytellers behind this episode are Triggerfish, and the directors are Daniel Clark and Nadia Darius. We'll be talking about how the storytellers use the three character decisions surrounding the first plot point, as laid out by K.M. Wyland in her book Creating Character Arcs, to end the first act and propel us into the bulk of the story. To set the stage, Ao is a force-sensitive girl living on a mining planet, the main material of which is Kyber, the special crystals that power a Jedi's lightsaber. However, this planet's Kyber has been corrupted, causing it to be unstable. Ao is a unique force wielder, for it manifests in the use of her voice. While being unique, it is dangerous for her to use her voice around the Kyber. When she does, the Kyber has a violent reaction. Oh. Apologies, Katu. Living on a planet full of Kyber, her father made the rule that she must seldom use her voice. Now that we have the pieces set up, let's get into the first plot point. Wyland describes the first plot point as something that will almost always be forced upon your character. This is Kratu, the Jedi, revealing to Ao that she is Force-sensitive, by telling her that the Kyber calls to her. This opens Ao to a new world. She can never go back to not knowing this information. They call to you. <laughs> the first decision that revolves around plot point one actually comes before the first plot point. It is the decision that the character makes that leads them to the first plot point. This is Ao deciding to go against her father's demand to keep her distance and take a peek at the Kyber. She goes even further and uses her voice to call out to the Kyber. This sets up the first plot point. Kratu knows that Ao is force sensitive and tells her so. Ao's father and Kratu talk about the Kyber and how their people are called to mine it. This is where the storytellers use subtext to further the story. Kratu is holding a conversation with Ao's father, but everything she says is meant for Ao. Her father says that their people have been called to mine the Kyber, and Kratu simply says yes, and that it takes courage to heed the call, all while looking at Ao, telling Ao that the information she has been given should be acted upon, but only if she is brave enough. This sets up the second decision Wylan talks about, the decision to react. This happens during the first plot point. If they simply observe the first plot point and continue on with their lives as normal, there is no story. This is Ao deciding that she needs to heed the call. Listening to Kratu, she raises her head and takes a strong stance. She is ready. And finally, we get to the third decision that a character makes in response to the first plot point. This is the character establishing a clear goal, something they will strive for for the rest of the story. After Ao and her father get to work, she hears the call of the Kyber and cannot refuse it any longer. Ao's goal solidifies. She must find the Kyber. Wylan states that you will know you found the right first plot point when it drags your character out of their complacency and on the path to destroying their lie. Ao's lie? Her voice is dangerous and must not be used. Whether she knows it or not, Ao has committed to change, and thus the rest of the story. This is how the storytellers use the first plot point in conjunction with character to lead us out of the first act and propel us into the second act with a leap of faith. 